Yeah, that's a really good question because you, you, it is hard for somebody who, um, you know, in their home, they can turn the thermostat up one or two degrees and, you know, it makes no difference. So what difference does it make if the globe is one or two degrees warmer? And the answer is uh, a lot. And uh, to, to help understand that, uh, let's go back to the last ice age. So last ice age was essentially a different planet. There were um, glaciers thousands of feet thick over North America. Um, the sea level was 300 feet lower. Ecosystems and animals were completely different. I mean, if you suddenly were transported to an ice age world, it would not look anything like the world we have now. And if you ask yourself, how much different was the temperature of an ice age world the global average temperature was about six degrees centigrade, uh, and that's about 11 degrees Fahrenheit. So 11 degrees is enough to give you an ice age. Now, um, uh, let's go back about 300 years to a period that people call the Little Ice Age. And the climate was, was quite different during the Little Ice Age. Uh, there were, you know, you can see Renaissance paintings of these ponds. People are ice skating on them. Those ponds don't freeze over anymore. You look at the paintings, there are glaciers about to run over the city. If you go to that place now, you can't even see the glacier. And you ask, well, how much colder was the Little Ice Age? It was one degree Celsius, about two degrees Fahrenheit. So these extremely small seeming changes uh, are cor correspond to these huge changes in, um, in the way the world looks. So when we say that the globe has warmed about one degree Celsius, about two degrees Fahrenheit uh, over the last 150 years, that's a lot of warming. And, and that's enough to take us out of the little ice age, a world that's notably different uh, to the world we have today. And that's just one degree Celsius. Now, to get to the question of how does one degree Celsius of warming translate into these heat waves, uh, again, you have to, translate from global average warming to local warming. So the global average warming the last 150 years is about one degree Celsius, two degrees Fahrenheit. Um, we know that the Northern hemisphere has warmed more than the Southern hemisphere. So that means Northern hemisphere warming is more than that. And land warming is more than ocean warming. So the land has warmed about twice to three times as much as the global average. So let's say, um, that land in the Pacific Northwest has warmed about two degrees Celsius, about four degrees Fahrenheit. So that means you're adding four degrees on top of any other heat wave. So let's imagine a heat wave that would have gotten to 100 degrees. Now it's 104 degrees. A uh, heat wave that would have gotten to 106 degrees is now 110 degrees. And you know that's how you end up with these really extreme um, heat waves. Now I think that uh, it's quite clear that um, if you look at the total amount of warming in, the, in that heat wave that the Pacific Northwest just had, it was an immense amount of warming. And climate change probably didn't, wasn't responsible for a huge fraction of that, but it was responsible for a significant fraction of it, you know, maybe 10%, 15% of the, of the extreme heat was caused by climate change. And um, that is extremely damaging because we live in a world, we live in a world where climate impacts are nonlinear. And, and what that basically means is that, you know, people in their minds have this idea that every degree of warming gives them a little bit of damage. And then at the end, the sum of, a, of, of all these little damages is a lot of damage. And the short answer is that's not the way the world works. It, in reality, as the world warms, uh, you get no damage until you pass a threshold. And once you pass these thresholds, the damage increases exponentially. And so, you know, if you think about a rainstorm, uh, the first inch of rain doesn't do a lot of damage. And the second inch of rain doesn't do a lot of damage. But at some point, you pass some threshold where you exceed the uh, uh, storm uh, rainwater infrastructure's ability to funnel away rainfall. And at that point, the damage goes up really rapidly. So it's that last inch of rain that causes you to go over the threshold that causes all the damage. And so when you add four degrees to a heat wave, even if the underlying heat wave was 20 or 25 degrees, you had four degrees, you're pushing a lot of people past the threshold that they would have not passed otherwise. And um, you know, that's why uh, it caused, it, if, the, if humans are responsible for 10% of the heat wave, whatever the departure from normal was, they're responsible for a lot more than 10% of the damage.